Hello, welcome back. Hello if it's your first time here. This is one of the So What videos. We do these every other week and this will cover crafts and sewing and it's going to be baking. And this one's going to be more of a talky video. So think of it a bit more like a podcast. I'm going to bundle a few different things in here. I wasn't really expecting to do this video until I sat down and started recording and realised that I kept going off script. So we're a little bit improvised here. Hopefully you'll stick around and have a listen and give me your thoughts at the end. First thing I want to discuss is what is going to happen in 2022. Now you've seen my end of year review and if you haven't, pop into the playlist for So What or the main video channel and you will see the 2021 review which talks about my first year on YouTube and how things have gone. Since then I've had time to sit down and figure out where I'm going this year. Get the cars out of the way first. I've kept my goals very simple with these three cars that I have. Princess is currently my daily driver. And the main thing I want to get done this year on that car is the paint. It's the biggest job, it's going to be the most time consuming, and it's drawing more negative attention than I would like because of the quality of the paint, and it's certainly not what I wanted it to be. That job was supposed to be finished a while ago, and things just got in the way. So that's this year's job on the Princess. On the Maestro, I need to finish the welding and I need to get it MOT'd. The Lanchester, our only goal with that is to try and get it road legal by August. August will be the two year ownership mark on the Lanchester, so we want it on the road by that point. Pretty much everything's lined up and ready to go, so we'll see how we do with that one. Right, that's the cars out of the way, so what's next? I will continue to do sewing and woodwork, and I'm going to be doing some baking as well. I've got some things planned on that front. Uh, just a case of figuring out how to record it. I can't really record anything in the kitchen because the sound quality in there is dreadful. I, I feel like the, the craft side of the channel ticks along okay, but it's a bit chaotic. Um, I, I actually really struggle to find the time to do the recording and the time to make the things. And especially at this time of year, because I've got so much less light to work with, it, it really makes it difficult to slot everything around when it's quiet. I appreciate the patience with these videos because I know, well, you never really know what you're going to get on one of these weeks. It, it could be anything. But I've got quite a few projects in hand at the moment. Um, you know, the waistcoat here. I've got fabric for various projects to get started on. And I'm trying not to overwhelm myself by starting too many different things without having things finished. I've been making some good progress on the sewing projects I have on. I've completed a couple of items, not got the videos sorted yet, so I've been working on getting sewing projects in hand because I don't want to end up in a position where I haven't got some backup material. It's always good to have stuff in hand. This waistcoat was going to be this week's video. I ran out of time. There's some hand sewing to do and a bit of machine sewing, but I want to do it to a good standard. I don't want to rush. So instead, I decided we'll do a what's coming in 2022 and talking type video, and we'll spend a bit more time on this one to get it ready for a future video. The red coat is being a problem. I have the outer and I have the lining cut out, ready to go but I realised I need some more structure inside it to give the finish that I want. So I, I'm doing a bit more planning on construction, figuring out pocket placement, that sort of thing. I'm a bit stuck on that one. This is all to do with trying to make an old project match up with my current standards. And there's a, there's a bit of a gap to bridge there. 
I've got other sewing projects in the wings. I've mentioned them briefly before. What I'm trying to do at the moment is not start any more sewing projects and get the ones I've got finished. And yeah, it's proving a little tricky, in part because for a few of them I'm missing certain materials that I need to get hold of and I haven't been able to get. But we're getting there. I'll, uh, I'll have them sorted eventually. I picked some fabric up recently and I'm not entirely sure what to do with it. I have one garment in mind for this, which is a summer garment, so uh, we're a bit early, but when you're buying fabric, if something comes up that looks like it's going to be useful, it is kind of worth grabbing it. It's a machine embroidered fabric, and it's just a, a sort of net type thing. It's nothing fancy or mega expensive, um, it's just synthetic materials, I'm pretty sure this is all plastics, basically. The top I think I'm going to make is going to be a variation on the uh, Rainbow Square shirt. If you have a pop in the playlist, you'll be able to find that. And I think this would make for really nice lightweight sleeves. And it will fit with the kind of stuff I've got in my wardrobe. I just need to figure out another fabric to pair it up with. In a very similar sort of a vein, this fabric which, again, it's another sort of see-through net. It's got a little dot pattern on it. There you go. I could do another summer shirt with it, so it's like a toned-down version of this one, which will be quite nice down here. I do suffer in the summer, it's a bit too hot for me. But I'm still going to have an awful lot left over. So if you have any suggestions on what I should do with these two fabrics, let me know. This is one of the most important parts of growing a YouTube channel, of getting your figures up. As with artwork, you have to get your work out there, get it seen, get as many fresh eyes on it as you can. Use things like the algorithms on these websites to actually help promote your channel. Because people are always looking for certain things all the time, so the more places that you can be seen, the better. However, I don't have a good relationship with social media, but I've always stuck more to the sort of blog type social media, rather than the village square type things like Facebook is. And the main reason for that is people. Now, if you're here watching this, you're probably not people, so don't worry. But you'll know what I mean when I explain what people are. People is this thing where you get a large enough group together and the worst elements of it just seem to come to the front. It's where you get the witch hunt mentality, the mob rule, just... Ugh. And sites like Facebook make it worse. And worst of all is Facebook is the best way to promote a YouTube channel. Facebook is so big, it's so universal, and so many people use it, that when you tell people, I don't have a Facebook account, they look at you like you have two heads. For me, the reason I don't have a Facebook account is... It feels like being in an abusive relationship. I have no desire to make that part of my job. Absolutely no desire. I don't want to be constantly nagged about not being on Facebook, about not posting, about what so-and-so likes and what such-and-such -such said. I don't need this in my life. It's not a healthy place. And even though I know a Facebook presence of some description would help grow this channel, would help me get those big numbers that other people are having, I won't do it to myself. I just won't. The other one is Instagram. Instagram is also a big driver of figures on YouTube. It helps people interact quickly and instantly with your content without them having to get into a video and then they can, you know, 
They see something like an Instagram, they see your link, they head on over to YouTube and watch your video. There's quite a few people out there who say that, oh, I need to get off Instagram, I'm always on it, I'm always scrolling, and it's like, maybe that's a problem. Maybe there's something about Instagram that is not healthy for you. It's also linked to Facebook, and that's, um, yeah. But I can't deny that Instagram, again, is very, very important for channel growth. It helps promote a channel in a way that few other platforms do, partly because of the size of Instagram. But I don't want an Instagram account. I, I just don't. I, it's another layer of responsibility that I just don't have the time or the energy for, so I'm not going to do it. This is something that I don't see a lot of creators making a decision about. What I see more often is creators looking at what platforms give you the numbers and pushing really hard on all those platforms, sometimes at the expense of their own health. And that's that's worrying because these big companies, although they're giving you this platform, just as YouTube is giving me this platform, to promote yourself, promote your work, they don't care about you. What they care about is the ad revenue. And that's fair. It's a business. Businesses need to make money somewhere. But don't for one instant think that they care about you or that they're worried about your well-being, or that they're going to do anything that protects you. They're going to do their level best to find out the easiest way to get money out of you, the easiest way to get people to engage with their platform and view and click on the adverts, because that's what their business is. We're so used to having social media in every part of our lives that we never really stop and give it a second thought. You know, you get up, you do your ablutions, you make yourself a cup of tea, and you sit down at the computer, it, when you're old like me and you don't use a mobile for the internet, and you turn on your social media of choice to get caught up. And it's, it's such an odd habit, because it's not like picking up a newspaper and reading a newspaper, which you can sort of easily detach yourself from. It's it's more immersive. I don't know, part of me is very uncomfortable that I do it, and part of me gets very anxious when I don't do it. In a way that I never did with printed media. I never got anxious about not being able to read the morning paper, not being able to tune into the news on TV. That never got to me in the same way as social media does. One of the other ways to grow the channel is changing the format. When I first started using YouTube, it was fairly common for videos to be between 15 and 30 minutes long. I quite enjoyed long format videos like this. I liked the amount of information they put in. I liked seeing a project start to finish. There were a few shorter videos out there, but they tended to be things like, it was people who weren't looking to run a YouTube channel they were more looking to do things like, I'm working on this old thing, here's what it's doing, can you help me? And they'd be like one or two minutes long. You still get videos like that, but they're less common now because it's easier to just do that on your phone and send a message to a friend. Now there's a bit of a trend, particularly with the rising popularity of platforms like TikTok, to do shorter videos. And there's I'm getting a little bit frustrated with it because I quite enjoy watching a long form video. It's great for me at the end of the day, I can put a long form video on and it just helps me unwind, see somebody else struggle or win with their project and it's good. I like it. So if you're still making long form videos, thank you, I'm enjoying them. But I'm seeing more and more 10 minute videos-ish and they don't contain anything. And I think I'm seeing it because they get the numbers. People click on these short videos and you watch 10 minutes and then you click on the next one, you watch 10 minutes. And it's an easy habit to fall into. You don't have to invest that amount of attention and time as you do in a long form video. But 
where some channels are taking their like half an hour video and turning it into three 10 minute videos, so you might get three updates in a week instead of just the one, there's a lot of other channels where they're, they're just waving the camera around and talking, they're not doing anything, you're not learning anything from what they're actually putting out there on this video that's supposed to be teaching you something, and it's just wasting 10 minutes of your time while you wait for them to get to the point that they never get to. And that bothers me, because it's making it harder to find decent content on YouTube. The trend towards shorter format videos of about 10 minutes or so does line up with what I'm seeing on my statistics here. The majority of people are only watching between 5 and 10 minutes of my videos. They're not watching the full length of the video. It depends on the content. A video like this, generally people do watch all the way through, or they pick out a section that they want to watch. But on the other videos, I'm noticing that people watch some of the first part, tend to miss out the middle part, and watch the end. And I know why that is. You're watching it and you're bored, so you skip to the end to see what happens. And then you'll either go back and watch the whole thing, or you'll be like, oh, that's what it is, and then you won't watch it. People do it with books. Some people will only buy a book when they've read the ending in the store, and that's kind of sad. I don't know what it means for the content I'm putting out there. I could certainly put a lot more videos out if I chop them down to 10 minutes, but I also feel like I couldn't get the information in in 10 minutes that I'd need to. So I'm probably going to stick with the long format for the foreseeable with a few shorter ones peppered in here and there. My full-time job is an artist. I create bespoke artwork by commission. The majority of my work goes to North America, some of it goes to the UK, some goes to mainland Europe, and occasionally I'll have a piece go out to India or Australia, or I think I've done one to Japan. Most of it though is North America. Up until very recently, the general attitude towards my work and me as an artist has been very reasonable and very positive. And I don't really have very much at all to complain about. If somebody's been unpleasant to me, they've been fairly easy to shut down. However, with the rise of that monkey artwork, that attitude seems to have changed, particularly from North American audiences. I've noticed a rise in this sense of entitlement that if I won't draw a certain thing, I am somehow a bad person. Even if that thing is something I've never drawn, never expressed any interest in, or worse still, something I've explicitly said I do not draw. I'm a human being. I'm, I'm not something that just generates artwork. I'm a human being. It takes time to do these things. Generally speaking, this attitude is coming from younger people. The other thing that I've had a problem with is where my trade's been dropping off. Without getting too political, because of the decisions the government made regarding worldwide trade, I found that almost all my French customers have disappeared, all of my German customers have disappeared, uh, most of my Spanish customers have disappeared, and almost all of my British customers have disappeared now. The North American customers have stayed about where they were, and I've picked up a few more Canadian customers, but not enough to offset the ones I've lost. I'm not sure what's caused this. It may be coincidental. It may be a conscious decision people have made. I know a lot of other creators are having trouble uh, trading with Germany if they're in the UK. And it feels like it's only going to get worse. It is getting harder to get the commissions. It is getting harder to get the work in. And it's not a problem yet, but it might be in the future. So we'll just have to see with that one, I suppose. 
The pandemic situation is now in the third year and yeah I'm not doing great with it. It's getting hard to stay motivated. It's getting hard to see any purpose in doing anything because just because and I know I'm not alone in this. It's quite frightening to see the number of people who are very selfish, who don't seem to want to care about other people. I don't want to turn this into a discussion about who's right and who's wrong. I don't want to turn this into anything political. This is purely where I'm at psychologically with the whole situation. So I would appreciate it if you take this for what it is. It's not a criticism of anybody and it's not a defending of anybody. The fact remains the pandemic and its restrictions have been such that it's changed how everything works. I already felt quite isolated when I moved down here because I don't really know anybody in this part of the country. When you move somewhere new, you spend the first few months making friends and connections and getting to know the place. I haven't been able to do that. I moved to this house just before the pandemic began and then I kind of had to stay inside. It's the weirdest thing to get my head around. I can't explore. I can't make new connections because the restrictions make it basically impossible. The knock-on effect of that is I've ended up, even with my support network online, and even with a couple of new friends, like, you just feel very lonely and very isolated and it feels like a nightmare you can't wake up from. I feel like I've had to put my whole life on hold, except for work. I've just had to keep working. And I don't want to anymore. <laughs>